Hi everyone, this is Sushma, Java trainer. Java trainer. So totally, I'm having eight years experience in this field. So in the in the previous video, we have discussed about Java introduction. In this video, I would like to discuss some more concepts in Java. And uh, first of all, I would like to discuss one interview question. So what is the interview question we are having? So let us see here what is uh, object code. What is object code? So actually, this object code is not present in Java. But before going to discuss about before going to discuss about bytecode, we have to know about what is object code. So object code is nothing but machine code, which is equivalent to source code. So let us see here. Object code is nothing but machine code, which is is equivalent to which is equivalent to source code source code so this is the definition of object code so let us see how the execution will be there in your c language and where the object code is generated so if you want to execute any c language program we are having three files so the come in when we are executing any c program so it was generating three files what is the three files let us see first of all we need to create a communication between each and every file okay so let us see here first of all when we are writing any c program the c program will be saved by using dot c extension so file name dot dot c so this can be call it as an source code what we are going to call it as an source code so how the source code will be present in your c language so hash include stdio dot h hash include conio dot h hash include conio dot h these two are nothing but header files main method and if you want to write any logic the whole logic should be represented within the main method so this will be there in the source code to convert this source code into object code we use c compiler we use c compiler by using c compiler we can convert the source code into object code so file name dot obj file so this can be called it as an object code so what object code can contain object code can contain mission language that means zeros and ones so whatever the code we are taking so that code will be completely converted into zeros and ones why because the system does not understand whatever the code we are writing the system can understand only zeros and ones so object code can contain only zeros and ones so next we are going to take here it is going to generate dot exe file so what is the meaning of dot exe file it is nothing but executable file what is nothing but executable file so finally whatever the output you are getting the output will be send it to the processor so like this in c language we are generating object code what we are generating here object code so next so now you people know what is the object code okay so next we are going to discuss about what is a byte code so this is another interview question most of the people can think that bytecode means it can contain uh, zeros and ones but it is wrong so when you are going to any interview you have to answer like this so what is bytecode what is bytecode so it is a it is a fixed set of instructions fixed set of instructions fixed set of instructions which are developed which are developed by java soft people which are developed by java soft people so how many instructions are there in bytecode there are 
200 instructions in bytecode. How many instructions we are having? 200 instructions. And here, each instruction occupies, each instruction occupies one byte of memory. Each instruction occupies one byte of memory. So, what are the instructions we are having? So, I know few, like three or four, I know. Why? Because these instructions are official. These instructions are, uh, uh, no one can know these instructions. So, I can know only few instructions. So, instructions are like, yes, yes, push, yes, push, yes, pop, okay, yell, add, okay, yell, add. So, these are nothing but some of the instructions I have known. Okay. So, let us see what is the execution flow of Java program and where the bytecode it is generating. So, when you are executing any Java program, here also we are having three files. How many files we are having? Three files. So, let us see here guys, what are the three files we are having. So, let us move from, let us create a communication between each and every file. So, first of all, we would like to, when we are writing any Java program, so you have to save the file name with .java extension. So, this can be called it as source code. So, after that, here, by using Java compiler, which compiler? Java compiler. You know the definition of compiler. Compiler means it will convert the source code to machine code and single step. So, whatever the source code we are writing, so that will be converted into file name dot cls file so you can convert it into cls file class file so class file is nothing but uh, bytecode class file is nothing but bytecode so here we are having jvm by using jvm we can convert bytecode instructions into mission code okay so what is the full form of jvm jvm is nothing but java virtual mission what we are saying it as java virtual mission so let us uh, whatever the mission code it was generating by jvm so finally the output will be send it to the processor finally whatever the output you are getting that will be send it to the processor so i would like to tell you two points here the first point is by using java compiler by using the java compiler we can convert by using java compiler we can convert source code into bytecode source code into bytecode so that is nothing but a dot class file so next uh, jvm so what is jvm already we know that the abbreviation of jvm is java virtual mission so it is a software it is a software so it is designed by using it is designed by using byte code instructions by code instructions so let us see here uh, by using jvm by using jvm we can convert we can convert bytecode instructions bytecode instructions into mission code bytecode instructions into mission code so that is all about your jvm so this is nothing but execution flow of your java program and we know what is bytecode what is java compiler and what is jvm now we will discuss now you people know about bytecode right so now now I am going to discuss about why Java is suitable for internet. Another interview question. Another interview question. Why Java is suitable?
suitable for internet. Why Java is suitable for internet? Okay. So let us see. Uh, before going to that, first of all, we have to know one point. So that is nothing but vara. Vara means write once, run anywhere. Write once, run anywhere. Why we are saying that write once, run anywhere? Why? Because see, when we are writing any Java program in one operating system, you can copy that Java program and you can execute in uh, another operating system. So that is nothing but vara. Write once, run anywhere. Okay. What is the first point? Why Java is suitable for internet? Let us see the first point. So once a Java program is written, once a Java program is written, it can be run on it can be run on any com any computer it can be run on any computer with uh, any processor any computer means any operating system okay with any processor then maybe i3 i5 i7 any processor you can take so because second point let us see the second point because java is system independent java is system independent already we have discussed about the system independent what is the meaning of system independent so it can support any type of operating system with any type of processor java programs will run on all computers existing on internet java programs will run on will run on all computers existing on internet all computers existing on internet so we have to see the more points so jvm is system dependent why because when we are installing java software internally jvm will be present if jvm is not installed some plugin is missing when you are installing your java software so the java program will not be executed so when you are installing any java software in your system so obviously jvm will be present so that is the reason jvm is system dependent okay so next term dot class file is system independent okay so i will tell you uh, one example see for suppose if you are writing any program in windows operating system uh, when you are executing that program in windows operating system it is going to generate a separated dot class file for suppose you are copying the same java program if you are executing it ios so ios can generate a separated dot class file okay so that is the reason dot class file is system independent now i would like to discuss another interview question so what is this uh, question what is the difference between what is the difference between dot exe file and dot class file this is the most asked interview question guys so where dot exe file is present dot exe file is present in c language dot class file is present in java so what is the exact difference between them so first point dot exe file contains mission code contains mission code which is directly understandable which is directly understandable understandable which is directly understandable to processor to processor while coming to the dot class file so dot class file contains dot class file contains byte code which is understandable to which is understandable to jvm why because the processor does not understand what is dot class file okay so that is the reason dot class file contains byte code instructions which is directly understandable to jvm and last point so dot exe file is system 
system dependent system dependent and dot class file is independent dot class file is system independent so that is nothing but what we are calling what we can say difference between dot exe file and dot class file now i would like to discuss JVM functionalities. So we are saying that a JVM. JVM is nothing but Java Virtual Machine, which is used to convert bytecode instructions into machine code. But now, how the JVM functionality will be there? So let us see the few of the functionalities. In coming videos, I will discuss about the JVM architecture. Before going to discuss the JVM architecture, I would like to give you small introduction to your JVM. That means how the internal working what are the functionalities we are having in the jvm okay let us see the first point so jvm will be loaded into the memory loaded into the memory so first of all whatever the jvm you are having the jvm will be loaded into the memory second point jvm has a class loader jvm has a class loader which loads the class in the memory which loads the class in the memory which loads the class in the memory okay so jvm internally contains a class loader subsystem so class loader subsystem will check whether the bytecode instructions are all right or not if any bytecode instruction is not all right then it is going to display error message or it will discard the program if all the bytecode instructions are all right then class loader subsystem will allocate memory to a java program so that is the second point next it will check after checking all the bytecode instructions are all right or not it is it will check for main method it will check for main method so after checking for main method jvm has an execution engine why because after uh, if uh, no errors are in the program obviously the program will be sent it to the execution uh, engine execution engine and calls the main method and calls the main method why because when you are writing any java program means the program execution will be start from main method so that is the reason in execution will check execution uh, engine calls the main method so we can create this is very very important point we can create any number of objects any number of objects to a single class name single class name for suppose you are creating the one class for that class everybody can think that we can create only one object but for single class you can create any number of objects so in this video we have covered what is object code what is byte code why java is suitable for internet and we have discussed about what is the difference between .exe file and .class file and JVM functionalities. Thank you.